Welcome to a new vlog, the series that will touch both your passion for electronics and your bank account at the same time. So December was a month with vacation days that allowed me to spend more time on AliExpress, ordering more stuff that's only now beginning to arrive. What's curious is that stuff from December is already arriving while stuff ordered at the end of November is still on transit. So our first item is this uh, best branded wire stripping tool. I saw this one on one of uh, Andreas P's uh, videos. He said he's happy with this wire stripper, so I decided to get one myself. This one is the 5023 uh, model and we can see on the back that it can do uh, AWG 20 up to AWG 30, which is perfect for electronics. 99% of the times I'm only within those values. The handle feels like uh, it's plastic. It's nothing like uh, I have on, on my other tools, but you would expect this uh, for the price. So let's uh, give it a quick try. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who in the past months upgraded their manufacturing line so they are now offering 24 hours turnaround time for prototype PCBs for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper than any other place so it's definitely worth checking them out. So this is uh, AWG 22 wire. Let's see, how are we supposed to use it? So yeah, we have a slot for a WG-22. So this looks like a clean strip. There are no uh, wires left in the jacket, so it hasn't snipped through the wires. Yep, it looks like a, a pretty clean cut there. There doesn't seem to be any any problems on the wires, so it works really well. Let's also try this uh, AWG20 wire. Once again, quite a uh, clean cut. It has not affected the the wires here. Everything is fine. And let's also try one of these very thin um, repair wires. I think this is AWG 30 or 32, something like that. Yeah, it works uh, for this one as well. Pretty nice. I'm not sure of the uh, purpose of these holes here, which are marked uh, copper only. If you know what these are, please let me know in the comment section. But I like the tool overall, Andreas was right, it's a good tool, especially for the price, it really does the job and it does it well. Next up I have a ceramic tweezer set. The body itself is made of stainless steel, but the working tips are ceramic. And those bring some advantages, let's take it out of the packaging. So those are the ceramic tips which are non-conductive, non-magnetic, they're heat resistant and corrosion resistant. Now, now being ceramic, these are not as uh, thin as and sharp as uh, steel tweezers. So I'll have to see if I can get used with these. Ideally, you would want to use them for, I would want to use them for SMD parts placement because the non-magnetic and uh, non-conductive properties should be pretty helpful uh, there. Now you can find these in different colors and different uh, tip shapes and you can even buy replacement ceramic tips because as you can see these are screwed uh, to the tips of the uh, stainless steel uh, tweezers. So should you need to replace these uh, tips you will find replacements. Now I often feel like I don't have uh, good quality tweezers so I'm wondering what are you guys using? Uh, can you find affordable good quality tweezers for electronics? Let me know in the uh, comments below. In uh, Voldo 101 I reviewed uh, this the S993A uh, 90 watt desoldering gun 
which I still use today occasionally when I need to do a repair on some uh, through hole board but this tool is over $100 and some people might think it's not worth the money if you're only going to use it once a year so I wanted to uh, try this out as soon as I uh, found it on uh, AliExpress it's uh, basically a uh, mechanical desoldering pump coupled with a cheap soldering iron now this one is rated for 240 volts so let's plug it in and see how it works I'm particularly interested at what temperature does it uh, work because there is no adjustment for temperature now the tool seems to be smoking uh, some nasty fumes these could be the uh, maybe the oils uh, to protect the metal during uh, storage and the transportation so it might uh, just do this once but it's quite nasty let's try to measure the temperature at the tip so it's about 250 degrees celsius 300 as I go higher but uh, that's of no use to us and it continues to smoke that I don't like but right at the tip we're getting about 350 degrees celsius let's uh, try to use it so the way you use this is you arm it uh, like a classical desoldering pump let's add some uh, fresh leaded solder to this uh, PCB I must say the, the spring inside is not very strong doesn't have a lot of uh, suction power and it continues to smoke it's like smelling quite bad already in here but the solder joint uh, looks uh, quite nice it looks like it sucked all the solder from from that joint let's try to remove that part and the uh, part which was this tactile switch just fell off so the tool does work even though um, I feel like the, the spring inside is not very strong and there isn't a lot of suction uh, power it does work it does pull the solder as you can see the, the component just fell off but this is just a single sided board if this would have been um, a double sided port, a board or a multi layer board it would have been uh, more difficult and uh, you would have to heat that pad for longer to allow the pump to suck all of the solder from the plated hole but in this case it, it works really well the, the only bad thing really bad thing I can say is that it continues to smoke from from these ports here and as you can see uh, we have some of that braided uh, sleeving inside uh, which should be fiberglass braid that it's beginning to to char and turn black and it's it's uh, smoking so what I would recommend if you want to get this uh, this soldering pump yes it's it's very cheap and it works it it might uh, speed up the job of uh, desoldering through hole boards um, but you need to maybe turn this on in a well ventilated space and let it smoke for for I don't know half an hour an hour so that all of the stuff that it's uh, it's smoking it's done and then you can use it in your lab because as it is it's pretty bad it smokes pretty bad and it smells pretty bad in here and uh, I don't like that so I had to pause and uh, ventilate the room because uh, it was smelling really really bad in here so the point is the tool works but I'm not sure it's it's okay to use something like this it's smoking really bad maybe it will stop at a later point but until you get there it's gonna smoke really bad and it, you're 
lab is gonna stink after using this so I can't really recommend it although it's it's cheap it works it does the job it has a major flow like it's it's smoking like crazy so you have to be aware of that before purchasing something like this because it doesn't say anywhere on the product page that it's gonna smoke like crazy uh, so you know that aspect before ordering it my next item is uh, this 250 milliliter squeeze bottle and I, sh I should have probably gotten a smaller one because the plan was to have this with uh, water or even better isopropyl alcohol to use in the lab for cleaning stuff boards I now realize 250 milliliters seem like it's too big for my needs but um, for this style with the curved neck I can also uh, I also saw these in a 150 milliliter size so I think I'll uh, order one of those as well you can get these in 150 250 or 500 milliliter size but you can find the smaller ones with the needle cap style that I have shown in uh, previous mail bags like this I uh, usually use these for uh, storing uh, liquid uh, flux or lubricating oils because it has this, that needle it's easy to apply it uh, in very tight spaces my next item is uh, pretty interesting it's the Xiaomi 70 my pro English version dash cam so this camera is at its uh, second generation I believe and it's uh, based on the Sony IMX335 sensor it's supposed to be a pretty good bang for buck these are the uh, specs on the camera they don't tell you much just the uh, input uh, voltage and the resolution and the battery capacity which is 500 milliamps the packaging feels uh, pretty premium I also like the form factor of this cam like this was a very important criteria for for me on uh, choosing a uh, dash cam I wanted it to have this uh, kind of uh, triangle shape so it blends in better and uh, it's easier to mount uh, I will probably mount this behind the rear view mirror and having this uh, form factor I think will help with uh, that I did not order the GPS add-on which is a small box that connects here via these uh, pogo pins uh, you need that if you want to make use of the driver assistance functions but I don't think I need those um, at least I don't need them uh, from a start so I can order that module later in fact as I'm shooting this video Banggood has the GPS module on sale for just $14 so I might just place an order for that and have it arrive a month or two later this camera even uh, supports uh, voice commands and you can connect it to your mobile phone to control some of the functions but it also has an LCD screen where you can um, uh, control it I want to turn this into a review because there are plenty of good reviews on YouTube uh, for this camera so you can check those out you can check uh, some samples on YouTube to see how how well or how bad uh, this thing shoots video but I'll show you what you get inside the box so I think this is just a uh, mount with some double-sided sticky tape so this will go in here I suppose and then you can attach this to your windshield but I'm guessing you will remove this and attach a new one if you get the GPS module so I think this is uh, maybe a, um, a pad that you should stick on the windshield yep so they call this an electrostatic sticker and you're supposed to put this on your windshield okay let's see what else we get in here we get a uh, 12 volt um, USB charger they don't say anything other than this port being a different color so you think that 
that would be a um, quick charge port but I don't think that's true because they say 5 volts only yeah so that's just the 2.4 amps output port and the, the second port uh, might be just 1 amp so just a, a generic uh, 12 volt charger this is like a pry tool I'm guessing to help you get it off the windshield and in here there should be a uh, micro USB cable this is probably two meters long to help you uh, wire it up up to the the charger I ordered uh, my camera from Banggood they had it on sale in December for $55.99 and they still have it on sale now in January with uh, that price you can also find it on Aliexpress but I didn't want to take a chance with that I know I can pay with PayPal on, ba on Banggood and if anything is wrong with the package I can request a refund from Banggood so whenever I buy um, more important stuff or more expensive stuff I tend to to buy it from a place that offers PayPal payment my next item is also pretty interesting a wireless charging station from base US it can do up to 10 watts and it supports a uh, quick charge on the input it can switch the input voltage to 9 volts uh, and well that will make the power delivery more efficient over a longer wire so if, if you were to place this like uh, two meters away from the charger uh, from the wall adapter and you want to use a 2 meter USB cable it's better to have uh, the quick charge um, function because uh, transferring uh, at 9 volts over 2 meter wire is more efficient than uh, transferring at 5 volts but what's particularly interesting about this uh, model let me get it out of the box so I can better show you it's transparent so you can see all the circuitry inside which I find uh, pretty neat at least for guys like us who uh, tinker with electronics now if you go and show this to your wife or girlfriend she's gonna be pretty unimpressed so this is best used on your side of the bed like I mentioned before I like these uh, base US products they are of good quality and they are not very expensive either so I highly recommend them if you're in the market for mobile phone accessories my next item is well suited for the winter you might recognize this I wouldn't know what this is at first sight but uh, I've seen it on Aliexpress it's called scrape around and apparently it's a trademark because it was difficult to order these from Aliexpress my first order couldn't be fulfilled by the seller he said they're having a hard time getting these from the copy factory in uh, China but the second seller said he has them in stock so here they are now you can search some videos on YouTube and you'll get to see how this works but it's uh, pretty easy you you use this like this to scrape around the um, on your windshield to clear the ice and snow and having this uh, this shape really really helps because the the snow will just get off the the windshield or, or so I've seen in in the presentation videos on YouTube uh, apparently the, this circular motion uh, with this shape of the tool works really well so uh, I wanted to give this a try um, I, I thought the only difference between these is the color but in fact they are different uh, this one uh, has like a, a small cone and a big cone this is uh, detachable but this uh, second one um, has like this uh, piece with with nails and you would probably use this to to scrape on the thick ice this piece is also detachable so they are a bit different in in design take a look at the, the difference when you're ordering this one also has this bigger funnel uh, so yeah take a look at the difference between the different colors when when you're ordering this on on Aliexpress so far we've had a very mild winter here in the seaside city where I live we only had snow for a few days but nothing serious but who knows we still have uh, January and February where uh, snow could hit us uh, hard and uh, this gadget will be put to a test but since this is an electronics uh, related channel not sure if you would uh, enjoy watching me put this to a test on a heavy snow
And the last item in today's video is this battery powered LED lamp. It's nice because it has a uh, light sensor and the PIR motion sensor. So it will only turn on if the light is below a certain threshold and it also uh, detects motion. It will then stay on for about uh, 20 seconds. Let's see if I can, yeah, if I cover the sensor, it uh, turned on. So it will now stay on for 20 seconds after which it will automatically turn off. Now to insert the batteries, uh, you have to remove the uh, back cover and this is magnetic you can see it has a couple of magnets and a couple of uh, thin metal plates that keep the back cover so this is how you install the battery it, the ba so this is how you install the batteries it uses uh, three uh, triple a batteries and um, I got it to use as a cabinet light because you can attach this using some uh, double sided tape inside your cabinet and have it automatically turn on when you open the cabinet. Now because it runs on batteries it will save you the trouble of having to run wires to your cabinet and I measured this and it takes 110 milliamps while it's powered on and 0.05 milliamps while in standby. Now a good alkaline AAA battery will have about 900 milliamp hours, so we can calculate the battery life in standby. That will be 750 days. So standby power is not a problem. It will last over two years in standby if you never open that cabinet door. But I've also calculated how many turn on cycles it will last. And that should be 1472 turn on cycles, each lasting 20 seconds on a single set of batteries which is not bad in my opinion. This looks like a decent design. That was all for today. I would really appreciate if you would hit the like button. I thank you for watching and I'll see you next week.